so now with signatures we come to the part in the big overview where we had discussed about how does your computer know that it's talking to my computer and not some imposter site. So you're accessing my web page, you go to the course page, you're getting well the information about this course. How do you know that you talk to the right party? With the Diffie-Hellman key exchange we have figured out how we could share a key, but this part, the signatures, is now about how you can be sure you talk to the right party. So the security goals of signatures are authenticity and integrity. Authenticity means that's really sent by the party that you believe it's sent from, so that's authentic, and that it has not been modified. Well, it wouldn't be much good if some message is sent by me, but you receive a different message, and so then you act based on a modified message. So it's important that also you're very sure that a modification to a message would get caught. Now think about the physical world about signatures. So then you have like these thick contracts and you have some intricate ribbon going through all of those and maybe there's some wax sealing and there's consecutive numbers and then you maybe initial each page and you put something on the last page. So the ribbon ensures and the wax ensures that no page has been added and the consecutive numbers ensure that no page has been deleted. And then you can inspect, um, well, has there been any modification to the text? Has anybody been using, say, Tipex or scraped up a little bit, tweaked it somewhere else? Um, and so, well, in the physical world, the integrity check is by physical means. And then for the authenticity, well, you hope that you can actually verify that my handwriting looks as follows. You're getting one signature by me at some point, and then you compare and say, well, yeah, it's a year later, but she probably still signs the same, so this is likely a signature by, by me. Or you think, okay, no, this is sufficiently far away, somebody is trying to get all of the curvy things the same way that I do, but this can't have been me. So in the, in the normal world, the authenticity part is a lot harder, the integrity part, well, it's, it's mostly done. In the physical world, in the, in the bits world, so in the online world, um, well, it's all bits and bytes, so we have to make sure that we have some function about this. And now that we have seen hash functions, well, they will play in a very important role in the integrity protection. Now, also, what does it mean that you're talking to the right person? I mean, it's not Alice identified by her passport, but what's typically the case is that you identify it by your public key. So this public key is known, say, my server's uh, public key, and then the per so you want to talk to the server whose public key you know, and well, the server is identified to be the person or the computer who knows the private key for it. So it's again a public key scheme so that you have an identification, you have the, the public key to show this is the right person, and then to prove that it's actually me doing it to get the authenticity in there, I will have to use my private key for showing that, well, I was active in creating the signature. So what we want to achieve is that nobody else can produce signatures valid under this public key. So it was really me and nobody else. Well, of course, if I give my private key to somebody else, then that person can impersonate me and sign. So it's not linked to my person, to my physical abilities, or to my passport. It is linked to the knowledge of the private key. So I'm the person who has a private key. If there are five people who have the private key, you cannot distinguish between us. It's been one of us. And so the data flow in signatures is that the signature happens with a private key, and then you verify the signature using the public key. So this is again a public key system, and we will look at examples using elliptic curve discrete logs. So you might think, ah, so I have my, my system that I'm using for Diffie Hellman and also using these keys signatures but we don't like this we would like to have separate key pairs for signatures and for different help for encryption systems so you have a key pair for a purpose and even though both of those might be using the same elliptic curve both of those are using a discrete log system on this curve you should have your encryption key or your Hellman key and separate from that your signature key this is generally a, a cautious approach because in some scenarios on the internet you have a system set up where um, 
a server just signs every message that passes through it, it's saying, yep, I've seen this message. The signature isn't worth much, but if the server would use the same key for signing as for encryption, then for some systems it's a problem because it would give you a decryption oracle. This is a very, very special case only for, this, uh, for RSA, which we'll see later in this course, but it's enough to discourage the future usage. Now, when you get to post quantum schemes, you'll actually see that there is no, no danger in using the same key because the signature schemes look totally different from the encryption schemes. But at the moment, in a pre quantum world, we typically use RSA or discrete log systems. You might be tempted to use the same thing. <clears throat> and it's just something you should not. So what are the attacker's goals? So similar to the encryption system where I did in the, in the example with the perfect code system, that you have different ways of breaking a system. You might want to break it in a way where you recover the secret key for the public key. That is a complete break. And of course, once you have the secret key, you can fully impersonate Alice. You know everything that, Al that makes Alice Alice, you know her secret key, so you can sign on her behalf. But it would also be a problem if you could sign messages without knowing the secret key. So if you would have what we had called um, forgeability, so if you are able to forge uh, signatures on messages of your choice, then you would be breaking the security property of universal unforgeability. So universal here means it's on any message. And not just on some, well, some message that comes out of the system. And the weaker property is um, some forgery. So it's not as powerful if you can only create some forgery rather than the forgery on any message. So here you don't have control over the message, but it would still break the security property. Now instead of universal unforgeability, we call this one existential unforgeability. So that does not exist any fake signature. And so then the attacker's goal is to break existential unfortability. And there are also different abilities for the attacker. So the uh, attacker might just have access to the public key, but the attacker might also get some bunch of well, message signature pairs um, where either in the no message attack he just knows the messages and the signatures but in the chosen message attack scenario, the attacker can request signatures. So the attacker can choose this M with all the um, tricks he can think of. So he asks for messages of his choice and will be given the signature. Now there's a connection between those. So if you, if you want to come up with an attack on one of those, well, first of all, it only counts as a forgery if it's a fresh message. So the message you're getting here in the existential forgery or here in the universal forgeability, a forgery, must be a message you haven't seen. So it must not be one of the messages that you received here in the examples. But sometimes there are ways to bootstrap from seeing signature and message pairs to actually breaking systems, even to the level that you could recover the secret key. Of course, those are bad systems, they are broken systems, and they should not be used. But it has happened that such systems were proposed and only found later to have such dramatic weaknesses. Also, to highlight the, the usability or the, the uh, reasons for caring about this, even breaking EU is a problem because we don't want, I mean, for any message that has a signature from Alice, we want to be able to say, yes, Alice, it was you, it was not somebody else. You can't just say, no, 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 I would never sign this. So even um, if the attack cannot influence what the message was, it would be a problem for the system. Of course not as bad as if the attacker had the choice of message, but depending what the system is, this is just as bad. So that is the general setup for signatures, and then in the next video I will show a bunch more of how to actually achieve this with discrete log systems.